In this video, let's revisit the bubble effect. And by the bubble effect, I mean this effect right here in which I can be on screen, I can be addressing the camera on screen, but also I'm sharing my desktop or I'm sharing a presentation at the same time. And we have this nice circle crop going on. So ever since our editor here at Thrive Themes, Mikael, introduced this, started using this effect in our tutorials, we've gotten many requests for how do you do this? How is it done? And we've also published a tutorial on how to do it. I'll link to that below. And the answer is basically use Adobe Premiere and keyframes and custom masking. And it's fairly complicated. And if you don't know your way around Adobe Premiere, then you know this is probably not a good way to try and get started but that's how we do it. Now there are some other options. And in this video, I'm going to show you not only a free tool that allows you to do something very similar, but also with this tool, you can get a similar effect for live streams. And so be warned, it is fairly complicated, but we're gonna get into it. I'm gonna show you how to set this up. And like I said, you can use this for live streaming as well as to record your own screen and camera at the same time. So let's get into it. I have a setup here where I can address the camera like this and show a full screen live video. I can show just my screen, which is in this case a PowerPoint slide, and I can create this picture in picture with a bubble effect with a nice circle crop where I can be showing something on my screen and I'm still addressing the camera and we have this nice combination. Hello, I'm Shane Milach from Thrive Themes and we make WordPress plugins. So usually we don't really talk about this kind of stuff, but like I said, because we get so many questions about this and because I just spent a ton of time figuring out how to make this happen um, using OBS, which I'll get into in a second, I thought I might as well make a tutorial. So what we're going to be using is OBS, Open Broadcast Software, Open Broadcasting Software maybe. Anyway, this is a free, broadcasting tool that you can also use for screen recording. And I'm going to walk you through how to do this. Now, caveat, I'm using a PC with Windows. This is also available for Mac and Linux, I believe, but there might be other obstacles there. There might be other steps there to achieve the same result. So this is for Windows specifically. To do this, number one, go and download OBS for free if you don't have it already install it and then open it up. Now, OBS, we have an interface like this. What we're going to do is, first of all, let's create a new scene collection, okay? And I'll call this, let's call this bubble effect. So that's a new scene collection. And the way it works is you have scenes that you can switch between in OBS. This here is your interface where you have scenes. Each scene contains multiple sources uh, here you have uh, audio levels and then here you will be able to see the you know the result of everything you've put in a scene and you'll be able to switch between them so you can think of this a bit like a powerpoint slide right on a powerpoint you have a canvas and you can put stuff on there you can put text and images and other media on there to create your slide and ultimately your presentation and this OBS for broadcasting works in a similar way, just that it's way more complicated because it works with video and is meant for live streaming. But similarly, you can pull together different sources such as video, audio, images, text, and so on. You can layer them on top of each other. You can arrange them on your canvas and you can basically tell this tool, you know, put all this together in this way and output this as one video stream. So that's what we're going to be doing. And the basis of how this works is that here you can add and remove sources. So you can capture um, audio from microphones, video from webcams, you can record your screen and other sources. And you can put all these together. But the way we're gonna do this, because there are many things that you think you could do uh, using this, but you can't. So um, that's why I'm gonna go straight into how to build this up and to start, we're going to do groups. So we are going to have our first scene here and I'm going to rename this to uh, groups. And in here, I'm gonna make groups and I'm gonna reference those groups in other scenes, all right? So let's start with a group that we will call, um, so I'll start adding a source and I'll start adding display capture. 
and I'll say, you know, screen, just call this screen. And then I choose which screen I want. That's going to be display number two. This is a screen which currently has a, a PowerPoint presentation on it. <clears throat> That's one of the things you can share, right? Or you can share your desktop or programs or whatever. And I like to just share the whole screen and then do whatever I want on that screen rather than sharing just a window. Okay, now this is working for me, but it might not work for you. So let me quickly go into that. If you're using an NVIDIA graphics card and possibly also if you're using another graphics card, but the thing is OBS does not work if graphics acceleration, if hardware acceleration is activated for it. I don't know why, but that's just how it is. Now, <clears throat> so if you see a black screen, if you basically try to get a source uh, from your display and it's just blank, hardware acceleration is going to be the issue. So let's take a look at how to solve that. What you wanna do is you wanna to get to your graphics card settings. So for example, you can right click and go to the NVIDIA control panel or you know, do a search in Windows, right? You can open Windows and do a search here for whatever your graphics control panel is going to be. Then you wanna go into manage 3D settings right here. <clears throat> and here you wanna, what, what I wanna do is I don't wanna turn off um, GPU acceleration just globally. I'm gonna turn it off for this program. So I go into program settings right here. And as you can see here, this is what I, this is what I did. So from this drop down, you choose OBS, Open Broadcaster Software, and, and here you turn the feature off. And the way to do that is you select the preferred graphics processor and you say integrated graphics, so not the NVIDIA processor, not the graphics card. So you're basically telling it, don't go to the graphics card, go to the you know onboard motherboard chip or whatever we have. You do that, you save that, and you restart OBS, and that's how you solve the black screen problem. All right, so we've done that. We have our screen, it's showing here. And what we also wanna do, I'm going to add an audio output capture. Um, I'm not gonna rename that. Audio output capture is if you want to capture system audio. So if you are hearing something through the speakers and you want to record that sound, that would be audio output capture. Now, when I'm sharing my screen, I probably also want to share sounds that are happening on my screen essentially. So for example, if I'm sharing a video and I play that video, then you know, I want people who are watching my video to hear the, the sound coming from that video. And for that, I have to capture the audio output. So in this case, I can basically say something that's going to my headphones. I want to capture that sound, the sound going to my headphones. Now here we have levels. So this kind of sound, this is a system sound. This will pick up and be recorded here. And we can see that by the levels. If I don't have an audio output capture, we'll only get the image and nothing else. All right, I'm going to select both of these. That is shift and click or control and click on both of them. Right click and say group selected items. And I'm gonna call this my screen group. And the way this works is I centrally create this group and I use it whenever I want to show the screen. Instead of creating a separate um, scene with a new screen and new settings for it, I create one group and I reference that group. That means that I can centrally manage everything uh, related to all of my groups and I don't have to do it in multiple scenes. So we're basically building up a, a more centralized way to manage our sources. And this is gonna be massively helpful. The more scenes you have to switch between, the more helpful this is in the future. So next up, let's get the webcam in. So for this, I want a video capture. I'm gonna call this webcam. Okay. And then what we have here is I have a 1080p webcam here, Logitech um, C920 but it's showing me low resolution four by three crop here. That's not what I want. So what we can do is we can change this by using custom settings. Now with custom settings, you can do whatever you want and most of it, the camera will just not be capable of doing and you get blank again. So here you have to know what is the maximum resolution of your webcam. In this case, it is 1080p. What is the frame rate? In this case, it's 30. Uh, what's the video format? In this case, it's MJPEG. And that brings it back. That
That's the only way I found to get an actual 1080p image here. So now I have this at the correct resolution, right? Now on this canvas in the groups scene, doesn't matter how this stuff is arranged. I'm not gonna change any of that. I'm not gonna change the layering or anything. And what I will do is I will add in audio capture from my microphone here. So I want audio input capture and I'll call this Rode Mic and use the Rode Mic. Okay, and here on the levels, again, I can see that this is working. I'm going to get these two here, again, select both with shift and click, and I'm gonna group them. And I'm going to call this webcam full, okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing again. To do this, I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy and right click in here and I want to paste a duplicate of this. Now call this webcam, rename, call this webcam bubble. So why am I doing this? I have two, I have twice the same setup here. Why am I doing this? Well, here's some other stuff you can't do that you think you can do. First of all, you cannot use your webcam as a video source in more than one scene. Okay, I can use my webcam several times in the same scene, but I cannot use my webcam more than once in or in, in multiple different scenes. So if I want to have a scene which is live video full screen and another scene which is live video together with desktop, I cannot do that. What I can do is I can create a group and that's why I have this scene here with all of my groups. I can create a group and reference that group, all right? Does that make a lot of sense? No, that's just the way it is. Another thing is I cannot have a scene with my webcam feed full screen and another scene with the same webcam feed, with the same source, with our circle crop. I can't have that. They either both have the circle crop or they're both full screen. Again, does this make sense? I don't think so, but this is the workaround. We make groups and we apply the filters to the groups instead of to the webcam. So this is why I have one group for the screen, one group for the webcam when I want to use it full, and one group for the webcam when I want to use it um, picture in picture. Now we can start making actual scenes. So let's say we have the um, screen, right? the screen only scene. Oh, I already use screen only. In this, I'm going to add the group that we've already created called the screen group. Okay. So what's missing here now is uh, audio input for when I'm talking. So I'll add that separately. I'll add audio input, add existing, road mic, okay. And now this is the scene where if I only want to talk and show the presentation or show my desktop full screen, this is what I use, okay? Next, we make another scene and we're gonna call this live only. Here, I'm going to get the group, which is an existing group. I'm not sure why this window is always so small. I'm gonna choose webcam full and this shares my webcam as well as the audio, what I'm talking in here. Now, let me adjust this just a little bit for the next step. Now I'm going to make, um, let's say screen and live. So this is another scene. Here I get multiple groups. I get, first of all, the group screen. Okay, and I add the group webcam bubble on top of that, all right? So there's layering here. If I collapse these, right? If this, I can put stuff in layers. So now the screen is on top, now the webcam is on top. That's what I want. And now I choose this group, not the camera source itself, I choose the group and I add a filter. I go to filters and I click on plus to add a filter. And the one I want is the image mask blend filter. I'm not gonna give the custom name. Now, what you need is an image like this one. 
This is a 1920 by 1080, that's the resolution of my video, 1920 by 1080 pixels image, which is black with a white circle. And the mask that we're implying is basically saying, take this image, everywhere that's black is what you wanna hide, everything that's white is what you wanna show. You can do this with a circle or with any other shape. I have this image saved here, so I'll open this and that's it. So that is what applies the circle crop. Now I can resize this and position it however I want. What I can also do, which might be useful if you have more stuff on the screen, I can also alt click to crop this in, right? So that I can basically crop out the empty space here and I can place this wherever I want. Depending on what I'm showing on my screen, I might want this to be a bit smaller, maybe like this. And this gives me what I need, right? What I can do here is I can switch between screen only, live only, and screen and live with our circle crop. And another thing we can do here while we're at it is we can duplicate this. We can call it screen and live, let's say left. And in this one, <clears throat> I can move myself over here and this is useful because if I'm explaining something, I'm doing something, you know, using a software program or something like that. And this bubble with me in it happens to be, happens to cover something that's important. I can switch to this one and move myself out of the way. And if there's, you know, if the whole screen is filled with important stuff that I need to be showing, then I can go to screen only. And that's basically how that works. That's how we get a setup. So these are basically the four scenes that I would want to be using that I can switch between that give me everything I need for a presentation where if I'm addressing just the camera, I go full screen live because there's no point in having like a static screen in the background while it's just me talking. If the screen is filled with important stuff, I go to the screen only. And if I want to show both, including a circle crop, I have two scenes uh, with me in different corners of this thing. So that is the setup that works. Now with this setup, this is saved. So we've created this as a scene collection and you can get that scene collection anytime. You can stream this. I'm not going to go into how to set this up for live streaming, but you can stream this and switch live, but you can also start recording. So you can record your screen and get a video file with this recording. So this is probably the best option for having this kind of versatility where you can make a video of your screen, of yourself, and of a combination of yourself and the screen that you can get for free. But as you've seen, it is fairly complicated. I had to clear several obstacles and I can easily imagine that if you use a different operating system, a different graphics card, you might have a bunch of other obstacles that I haven't addressed here that you'll have to go and Google and, and find out what the heck do I need to do to get this to work? So it's not very convenient. I think that for most cases, especially if, it, if the point is just to you know get a video out there, then it's much better to use something like Camtasia where maybe you don't have the fancy circle effect, but you can get all this done. Plus you have an editing tool. You know, you have, you have everything you need. It's, it's much easier. It kind of works out of the box. And for me, this kind of convenience is worth paying for. Camtasia is a premium product. But I just wanted to share this as well, especially because it's also suitable for live streaming. So that is the bubble effect revisited for live streaming and screen recording using OBS. Also for editing, if you wanna do, we showed how to do it in Premiere. I'm also gonna make a bonus video to show you how to do it in DaVinci Resolve, which is super badass editing program, very advanced and also free. So. Yeah, if you wanna go further and look at even more bubble effect related stuff, check out the links below. And for stuff that's totally not related to making bubble effects in videos, but is related to how to build a more effective website and increase your conversion rates, check out Thrive Themes and the Thrive Themes blog. Thank you for watching. And as always, if you have comments or questions, feel free to leave them below.